Hello, welcome back to the Full Force podcast here on Niche Sports. I'm Nathan, joined as usual by Dan. How are you? Good, 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 mate. And we have a special guest with us today, the five and one Oxcon, current Oxcon fighter, Corey Fry. How are you today? Yeah, good. Nice to meet you both, lads. Thanks for coming on, Corey. So, yeah, thank you for joining us. And, and you join us after a, a you're probably your best win of your career at Octagon against Dennis Ilby. First, talk us through that fight. Obviously, a first round finish. You, you have to be delighted with that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously, all, all the moon with it. It was a bit of a bit of a blur for the first couple of weeks. Uh, it was a lot to take in. A big, big step from the local scene uh, going into, you know, the Germans' back garden and wiping out the top boy in front of twenty thousand people. It's uh, they're a bit daunting, but. Yeah, it was it was a good fight, mate. It was exactly how I expected it to go, to be honest. Uh, I remember seeing him walking in. He was built like a fucking XL bully. So I, I saw him coming down the runway and I thought, oh, here we go. This kid's filled out. And then he, he came in and I remember he busted, he like jogged round and busted me. And he, I felt like the, the weight of his hands, I thought, this guy's going to be able to bang. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to uh, have to strap myself in here. So... Yeah, he caught me with some big shots to start off, but as soon as I got hold of him, I knew it was game over for him, really. What What was that, that like? Because obviously, that's almost like an away game, I guess, is, is the best way to put it, in, in his home country. Talk us through that that week, fight week, going into the fight in terms of the atmosphere. Well, to be honest, to, to be honest, the the, the, atm- the atmosphere around the, the venue, like we was going to a lot of places and it was quite weird because we went to like sports shops and stuff and there was literally posters in my face in the window and stuff with, uh, you know, like side by side with Dennis and stuff. And But Pete, but I've heard it a few times. People say about Octagon fans, they were saying that, oh, they're really, you know, they're really well-educated, they're really good, um, you know, the really enthusiastic fans and stuff. And we walked in and I swear to God, I felt like I were a celebrity when I walked in these places. They were like literally like coming up to me, asking me for pictures and stuff. And there wasn't really any animosity there from from the fans, which was quite good. That was outside of the arena. I'm not saying when we got in there. And then when we really got in there, they fucking they hated me. But <laughs> especially when I, when, I, when I beat him. But in the... Uh, in the surrounding areas for the, the week, it was actually a stunning place. I, I said to me, Missy, I'd actually go back there for a weekend. It was actually a really, really nice place. So, yeah, it, it was a, a really good experience. And what yeah. was that feeling like? Oh, sorry, sorry, Dan. <laughs> There's had one more follow up before I forget it. Um, you, you got the finish. What Can you describe sort of like the 60 seconds after that that finish where you, I assume the arena, you know, stun silence after you get that get that victory what was that feeling like after securing such a big win like obviously other than obviously the obvious like the birth of my kids and meeting my missus and stuff it was the best feeling i've ever i've ever had it was but like i don't know if you noticed after the video but they had to sit me down and put ice on my legs because because i clamped to him so hard like so strong in in the round and I put everything into that that um, to get that to, to get the win. It was like I had a big adrenaline dump. It was like it's like coming down off like the worst fucking drug on the planet. Do you know what I mean? It was like oh my body just seized up, my legs seized up. I just felt like this, like whoa, I can't, like I could like I couldn't believe it. Do you know what I mean? It's like I just exerted every ounce of energy I had into into that fight, and it was. I remember I, I went I went back after the the fight, and I got a little bit emotional. Because I couldn't quite take in all the feelings that had happened to me. Do you know what I mean? Now, one minute you're like you're thinking, oh, "I'm a bit nervous," you can hear everyone like booing and stuff like that. And then next thing you know, you, you're feeling absolutely over the moon. You, you're full of adrenaline. Then you have an adrenaline dump. So it was just a lot to take in. But I remember winning. My 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 um, my um, head coach jumped over the cage, and we always say with my coach, if he gives you a compliment. Or it's, it, it, you know, he gives you a boost up. You know, you've really deserved it. And I remember the first thing I saw was my coach jumping over the cage. He wouldn't usually do something like that. For a start, he's like forty year old and he's, he's got over this cage like he's like he's fucking, you know, a gold medalist high jumper. And he's he jumped he jumped over and I just thought, wow, we we've absolutely smashed this. We've come over and we've proper we've we've done him in. 
Absolutely. I mean, it was a great one round fight. It had a bit of everything. Your performance shown a bit of everything. Um, was you looking to take him out submission or knock him out regardless? Because the, the, the fight just sort of blew up didn't it? From, the, from the opening opening round. Opening, yeah, didn't it? Like he came in and straight away and shut the kitchen sink at me. Do you know what I mean? He, he, he hit me with absolutely everything he had and I knew he could only do that for a short period of time. Um, where I was kind of just finding my rhythm and, and if you watch the fight back, obviously the more and more I watch it, the more I know it and stuff. And there's a, there's like a turning point. He hits me with his, his best flurry. I knew that was his best flurry in the first thirty seconds. He hit me with some big shots, and he kind of saw it like the, the kind of the switch. He then started missing everything, and I started landing everything. And then he threw the kick, and I caught it, and it turned around that way. But to be honest, I wanted to knock him out to prove that I was the better boxer. But it wasn't a boxing match. It was more of a a scrap, do you know what I mean? It was a it was a fight. It wasn't a boxing match. It wasn't a technical bit of warfare. It was all guns blazing. You know, measuring dicks contested. Let let's have it. Do you know what I mean? And and I won. <laughs> well, like, I've just watched the fight back about half an hour ago, um, and like you said, the the moment it switched when you went to the floor, did you think right? I can, I can get him out here because it's sort of like. He's all into the first, into the first floor, so he gassed a little bit, didn't he? Pretty, pretty quickly, it's fair to say. Yeah, like I, I landed in like a half guard and I, and I put, um, you know, like a deep cross face from my shoulder right across his, his face and I could feel like a big, big, big breath from him and then I knew, like, you've blown yourself out there a little bit and I said all week in my interviews, if you saw any of my interviews, I said all week, he's going to feel the nerves of this. This is on his doorstep. He's got 20,000 people who are probably going to be quite who know him quite well. Johnny's a big draw out of Germany. And and I said, that's going to get to him. And he came out and tried taking my head off to prove a point. And he said in his interview, he said, I like my pizza heart and my beer with a head on it. Yeah. And lucky enough for him, it was still hot and his fucking beer still had an head on it because it was done in three minutes. <laughs> so, but what, um, was, what was your instant feeling after it when you silenced the crowd? Did you, was you just like, oh my God. Yeah, because when you walk in a place like that, you, obviously 20,000 people, it is a lot. But when you see it, you actually stood there and like you imagine you're in like a cereal ball of people. Do you know what I mean? You're just surrounded. And, and when you're coming in and, and his walking was like one of the most moving like experiences I've ever had because I was right in the middle of it. Do you know what I mean? And I saw this block coming out and this crowd was, when I say incredible, you I, you can never put it into words until you actually stood there and you, you you got a full 360 vision of it all. Do you know what I mean? And and it's about you. Do you know what I mean? It's a little bit different as a fan. I've been there as a fan. I've been to UFC London. I've, I've done stuff like that. But when you're in that cage and you know this is all about your event, it, it's a little bit different. So... Yeah, it, it it was a bit of a just a bit of a mad experience to be honest. It it was it was a lot to take in emotionally and, and, and you know physically and mentally. Absolutely, I think going from the local regional scene at UK Fighting Championships to nearly twenty thousand people in Germany, it's a bit of a massive step up. And hats off to you, Corey, because you coped with it brilliantly. Everything, you, the lead up to fight week, the way you come across. And uh, the emotion that you're showing after it. So hats off to you there, fella. No, I appreciate that, mate. Thank you. Is that one of the appeals of being at Oxford? I mean, so they do the big, you know, Prague, where, where you've been recently, Dan. It, it, you know, these big events where you're a bit out of your comfort zone, but it really gets gives you a chance to almost feel that big fight pressure that, that you need if you're going to be a star in this, in this sport. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, these, these are the shows that I, I've said this to Octagon. I've said it in multiple interviews. There's there's plenty of shows you can do this on. Do you know what I mean? Probably not to that to that magnitude. Do you know what I mean? Twenty thousand is a big big number for even the UFC. Do you know what I mean? The UFC did it there. I think they hit something like eleven eleven thousand. Uh, so twenty thousand is a big number. I think that just so happened to be the show I was on. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Uh, I wouldn't have minded it being like a eleven ten you know ten eleven thousand capacity and just let me you know get get me bearings a bit. But no, I got chucked in the deep end. But uh, I'm kind of glad I did. I, I handle pressure really well. I always have since being a kid, and um, you know, we 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 adapted to the scenario that we're put in front of me, and I just had to, you know, just get, just put myself out there and, and and make a good impression of myself. And that was the biggest thing for me that week was I knew I come away, 
even though we you know we got the we got the fire bonus, we got the extra money and you know we came out with a decent bit of money, the impression was far more valuable to me than money was that week. So it was a really, really good week for, for, for me and my team. Well, I just want to talk about the influence um, and the relationship with Aaron Aber. What because it, it's great the way to you two rub off each other. Let's just talk a little bit about that. What does he mean to you and vice versa? Mate, he's uh he's a knobhead. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he's uh nah, he's like my brother, mate. He's 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 absolutely class AB and AB is literally the walking example of when you feel like you've had a bad day. You, you can always use him as an example because that guy has had the worst curveballs that life can ever throw at you. And every single day, mate, he helps me. He helps me with my nutrition. He helps me with my mindset. He helps me with my training. Because people look at me in AB and would think that AB would teach me grappling. I would teach AB striking. But we teach each other different elements and, and he gains from my strengths and I gain from his strengths and he builds up my weaknesses and I build up his weaknesses and we're both not afraid to tell each other where we go wrong and we're both not afraid to be a man and say where well, we're wrong and you're right do you know what I mean so he's just a, a an unbelievable un, oh, sorry unbelievable role model for not just myself but my kids all the young lads coming through the gym that because when you when you're growing up and you like for me I'm a young parent you know I'm well, I'm not young now, but I was a young fucking parent. But, but like, he, he, he's a an example that you know. Even when you feel like your life's hard work and it's getting bad, and it's getting like you think, oh, this is too much. This guy smashed cancer, smashed. Well, he's not smashed cystic fibrosis, but he he d- deals with it every single day and he it performs at the highest level. So, what excuse have I got that oh I've got a bit of a sore wrist or I've got a bit of a sore back? Do you know what I mean? He's just uh, yeah, he's an inspirational guy and. He's a little dweeb. I'll lever him, but he's, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's one of my best mates, and I couldn't wish for a better teammate. To be honest, well, at least you're both on the um, the Newcastle card in a few weeks, and they've give you another German unbeaten Max Hauser. Um, what's your preparation been like? I know you don't want to give away too much, and have you seen much of Hauser? Do you know what to expect? Yeah, he's he's, he's what I call a plodder. It's, it's Max. I, I don't. I don't see him as athletic. I don't see him as, you know, uh, a massive knockout artist. I feel like he's a guy that can hold a sixty to seventy percent pace for a long time, and that for me is a benefit. Having someone like AB, someone like my brother Zach, these lads who, and Chris Morris, um, these guys that can hold stupid paces like ridiculous. These then three guys I've just named, then they can hold. Up like ninety percent for five fives. Do you know what I mean? The ridiculous, the ridiculous athletes, and I think with Max, is a plodder. I think like he's gonna just try, just be active all the time. He's gonna constantly just try shoot and shoot. But I don't think he's gonna have the strength. I don't think he's gonna have the athleticism. I think don't think he's gonna have the fight IQ to beat me. And that's I'm, I'm trying like when I'm saying that I'm not trying to be arrogant. I just feel like I've had the much more harder tests. I feel like English MMA is far harder than German MMA from amateur to pro. You look at amateurs in this country, you look at you look at people like Curtis Campbell. Great yeah. example. When he went when he was amateur, he would beat ninety percent of pros. Do you know what I mean? That's how good the the amateur level is in this country. Do you know what I mean? You, you, once you've had three or four fights in this country amateur, you're fighting at a high level from then. Until you until you you go abroad and fight the foreign blokes on bigger shows, and that's that, that's the advantage I think I'm going to have with this guy. Yeah, and you, and you speak to you know how how the scene in, in is, is maybe how you come up for UK fighting championships. How important are those small hall shows that are perhaps not the biggest attended, but into grounding you and getting you up in in the MMA landscape? Man. Shows like UKFC are the building block of UK MMA. Without them shows, you're not going to be able to put the tests in place to to build up the foundations to get you ready for pro. And that is the, that is the simple fact of it. You know, you, I have seen lads that have come into amateur, had two or three fights, gone pro, been battered three or four times, ruined the career. I've seen fighters that have gone on 
you know, 10, 12 fight win streaks, amateur, fighting absolute donuts, gone pro, two, three losses, skid, gone straight back down, end of, end of the career. Fingers with UKFC and even other shows, do you know what I mean? But UKFC, I think, are, are, are the best at it and that's not me just being biased because people think that I'm biased because my coach runs it, but Steve's only been my coach for the last three years. I've been fighting on UKFC since, uh, UKFC since I was 18. So, you know, I've, I've seen it from being like the one of the, uh, you know, the new shows to being one of the best shows in the country for UK MMA. And they, they for me, give me the hardest tests at the right time in my career. You know, it's not one of these shows that will just feed me to the Lions, to their homeboys, to make their home lads up and, and ruin my career. Do you know what I mean? They're really invested in everyone and building everyone up and giving people good opportunities to show the skill and get good experience. So without them shows, you know, the, the, the UK MMA scene to be on its ass. I, th I think it's thriving at the minute as well, with not just UK MMA, with full contact contender, kingdoms on the rise as well. And it's not just like there's a matchmaker and everyone's just like, you fight him and you'll fight him. It's the coaches are working together and they're matching them at the best of their ability. So test-wise, you've got it spot on. It's like the, the stern test from the outset, isn't it? Yeah, of course it is. And, and... And as a coach, because I've coached some lads, you know, I, I've had people like Charlie Flanagan, I've had my brother Zach, I've had Zach Miller, I've had Jamie Smith. I've had these lads since being young lads and I've took them with me to Preston when I made the transition to Preston and stuff. And I know what it what it's like to be a coach as well as a fighter. And I know that, you know, there's so many coaches out there, not as much now, I would say, because you can't get away with it anymore, but there was and there still is a couple where they would just give the fighters easy fights to build up this false sense of security and this false you know facade and then when it comes to the real deal it all comes crumbling down from them and it's horrible to see as well because these kids don't deserve it but with, with what what i know you should do is you should have you know an easy fight for your first, not an easy fight but a debut for your first fight just like your debut and you should just build up from there and just you know, don't go diving in because you see some people trying to take amateur titles at two or three and all. It's a big mistake because you're fighting someone who's one of the best amateur guys in the country and it's a massive confidence knock. I've been there. I was three and one. I might have been two and one when I had my first amateur title fight and it was the worst thing I could have done because I, I went in there young, naive, you know. I, I went in there thinking I can just go take people out and it just happened like that gassed myself out, got caught with a sub in first round and made myself look a sausage, do you know what I mean? So it's it's massively important that you time it and you, you get the right test at the right time. And like you said, all them shows you've just you've just listed then, I think do a great job with it. Absolutely, Nath. Yeah, as you mentioned being a coach, do you feel that's benefited you as a fighter as well, getting having that almost responsibility of teaching other people as help you possibly when you as a fighter? Yeah, hundred percent. I think it's benefited me as in the fact of it's made me mature a lot quicker as a fighter. Uh, you know, I've had to be the role model for a lot of these young lads, and you know, it's monkey see, monkey do, isn't it? If if I if I'm pissing about and taking my training out past, then they're just going to repeat the same. And it's a domino effect from there. And before you know it, you've got a gym full of half ass kids who just want to be UFC fighters, but not putting, willing to put the work in. So it made me mature up. It made me have to be a role model. But it also makes you, like, one thing I think being a coach helps is you have to break down every single detail of every single technique to the, to the finest quality. And if you can then break that down to the finest, finest detail and be able to get that across to, say, a group of 22 kids, then it's sunk in your head a piece of piss then because you've managed to get it across to all them. So it makes it, it like dummy fight, it like dummies it down for you. So all these like really advanced techniques become really easy because you're having to break it down to the, to the small detail. So yeah, it benefits you in like many ways, like as well as your confidence as well. You've just touched on um, advising, like taking right fights at the right time and not jumping into title fights, amateur. So, what other advice do you give to the young fighters, and what what fighters can we look out for from Northwest Academy? To be fair, we've got some absolute killers coming through. To be honest, I, know, I had Aaron on recently, and he was saying like the gym is thriving at the minute. 
oh, it's ridiculous, mate. And it's not just that. Like you think to yourself when you think of like next like coming through, you just think of like teenagers. But mate, our kids' class is ridiculous. Like my coach Steve expects this exact same from a nine-year-old kid as he does from me being on Octagon. You know, six and one pro. He expects the exact same from us, and that's why the level of our kids that are coming through are unbelievable. Like I can't like. I know some people big up the gym, but they are unbelievable. I don't know if you saw any of the UKFC clips of the kids' fights. And, yeah, I've been to a few. I've been to a few. Like, yeah. Nightingale's son, Jack Nightingale, got an armbar, slick armbar in like the last five seconds of uh, the first round and stuff. And yeah, and obviously you've got like my my brother Zach. Uh, I've been through all my career with him. Uh, he's he's going to be a massive prospect coming through to the pro rankings in the in the new year. Um, I think he's going to be signed to a big show pretty quick. He's got, you know, he's got all this, this the style, the look. Uh, we've got Charlie Flanagan. He just he beat Ronan Deegan in one of his last fights. who was ranked number one in Britain um, and made it look, like, not easy, but he made mince meat out of him, I'd say. I think he won every round and then finished him in fourth. He could, you could arguably say he's won every fight. He's, ever, he's had two losses, but you could arguably say he won both of them. Um, Jack actually won't like that if he sees this. <laughs> if I give some shit on Insta over it. Um, but we've just got some serious, serious talent coming through. Um, and, you know, the only advice I could give to kids is just trust the process. Do you know what I mean? You are going to get ups and downs in this sport. There's going to be, it's the most aggressive game of chess in the world. Yeah. You know, it, and it, it's the most I unforgiving sport. Know. It's the most unforgiving sport in the world. Like, everything you do... You're putting your body through the most amount of stress. Most I, I've played a lot of sport and I've never had a sport like this. I put my body through my body and my mind through absolutely everything. And you just got to trust the process. You are gonna have up 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 days, you're gonna have down days. And when your coach is saying something to you, it's not him having a go at you, it's him, you know, having your best interests at heart. And sometimes you've got to drop the ego and you've got to drop you know, the testosterone and the attitude and, and, you know, even with, like, your parents, not just your coach, like, your dad. I remember I used to listen to my dad when I was a kid. I'd be like, oh, fucking give it a rest. And then when you grow up, you think, and you have your own kids, you think, fucking hell, I wish I listened now. Do you know what I mean? I wish I listened. And, and if I knew what I knew now, back then, I'd be in the UFC now. But I wasted so much time arguing back then and being a little shit. That you're just losing time, do you know what I mean? But I think we're putting that, we're instilling that into the lads in the gym. Steve and AB are absolute 10 10 for this kind of stuff. They know what it takes to be at the best level and they will, uh, you know, they constantly remind us and show us that if you do this, you will end up here. And then now he's showing us the likes of AB, Caroline, me coming through. We have like people like Dakota Chaver and people out like there that come through our gym. Um, Connor Hughes who's been down to the gym people like this he's like if you do this right this is what's going to happen and there's the proof so for any young lad getting into this sport I'd just say trust the process trust your team and trust your coach because he's not just a grumpy fucker he actually knows what he's talking about <laughs> now tattoos you've got a lot of tattoos Corey. how many tattoos have you got exactly oh, too many there I've got two full sleeves um, my full chest my Quad, calf, fucking chin, my neck, my head, side of my head, my face. I've got too many, mate. I, I, ain't, I ain't counting them, to be honest. <laughs> Do you have meanings behind them all, or with some of them just because you wanted a sleeve and it looks it looks good? Uh, so my my left sleeve is all dedicated to my family. Um, yeah. It's all associated around my family, my missus, my kids, and my hands are are. In remembrance, people. Obviously, I've got my both my kids tattooed on my hands anyway. But I've got like my I've got the matching tattoo on my hand of a star uh, after my when my granddad passed away. It was something I always remembered. I remember when I used to go in, I used to look at his hands. My granddad used to have proper. My granddad were a Londoner, and he used to have proper grafters hands. And it was the typical Londoner with the sparrow on the hand, and then he had just like uh, these blue, like the old blue tattoos. Do you know what I mean? Like the jail looking ones. He had two stars on his hand. So I had I had that done. Um, I got obviously um, engagement ring and stuff like that on my finger. But I also got one. I'll, I'll quickly show you. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it. The cross on my on my hand. 
um, when to, in 2018, I just fought uh, Adam Walsh and I got beat. And uh, I got beat, and one of my best mates came up and fought to me. And I didn't have to, I didn't have the time of day. I didn't have the time of day for him, if I'm being honest. Um, yeah, I was, you know, I just lost a fight. My head was up my ass, and about four o'clock in the morning, he was stabbed to death. Um, so I'd got the matching tattoo and his initials on my hand. Jesus, I'm sorry to hear about that, mate. I didn't know that story. No, no, it's it's, it's good, mate. It's it's a long time ago now, but uh, yeah, it was a an horrible situation. Um, just getting into dispute with people, pissed up, and he had such a bright future in MMA as well. He was an absolute warrior, and yeah, it's just it's the problem in it. We can be the toughest guys in the world, but when it comes to a night, it's only one winner, isn't there? So yeah, it's just a that's more of a remembrance for him. Yeah, Nave. Yeah, that yeah, that's sorry to hear it from myself as well. But you you talk about these stories and, and you have your coaching as well. Is this a part of the legacy you want to create for yourself? Not just hopefully carving out a successful fighting career, but also helping so many people with with their fighting and and their lives through MMA. Yeah, hundred percent. Like I was talking the other day to one of, to my videographer, and my photographer. I was talking the other day about this sport. You think that everything you do in this sport would only lead uh, open up doors to things revolve in this sport, but it doesn't. You open up so many channels to different people. Like for instance, one of my sponsors, Lad United. Um, I literally went to an MMA session, bumped into a guy who ended up knowing my mum. Used to know my mum from like when they were kids and stuff, and we got chatting, and he, he just said to me something as simple as, "Oh, we 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 do this football thing on a Friday. Do you fancy coming down for a kickabout?" So I was like. Yeah, I'll go down and basically it's a, a full football team with men with mental health and it's all men that have struggled in the past and, you know, post-COVID when, you know, men's mental health was absolutely, you know, at a whole time I, you know, there was the, the suicide rate was, you know, ridiculous and the thing is like Paddy the Baddy says, you know, there's a stigma that men won't talk to each other and this group of lads literally got together because you need lads lads always need the mates you need your lads and so i work with i work with them now every single week i do you know stuff with men's mental health i used to be you know an instructor and assessor so pretty much a teacher at a, a kids behavioral school for kids with you know like an sen school special educational needs so autistic kids adhd kids like to be fair like you look at me and you wouldn't you won't get this image from me because you know I'm, I'm covered in tattoos head to toe. I punch people's heads in for a living. Do you know what I mean? Do you, know what I mean? you won't put two and two together, but with my legacy, I just wanted to, I wanted to, you know, just show people that even if you come from nothing, I've come from a council estate in the middle of Blackburn, you know, me and my brother, and, you know, nothing really good comes out of it. You know, I, I, there's been people killed around the area. There's been people, like I said, one of my mates has been stabbed to death, and... It's not a nice place to be. It's a bit more chill now, but no matter what, if you you keep showing up and you, you keep turning up and keep putting the graft in, you, you can achieve anything. Me and my brother were talking about it, that we literally, we used to look at people coming into UKFC when I was 18. And it's like, you just go, oh my God, he used to fight. He fights on Cage Warriors in. He's well good, do you know what I mean? Like Brendan Lottnane. Brendan Lottnane at the time was on FCC. And... I want to be that guy that people talk about. Do you know what I mean? I want to be that guy that people come in and kids go, ah, oh, it's, it's him. Do you know what I mean? And and I'll inspire them to to do what I've done. Do you know what I mean? And and you know, just just to be a nice person as well. I'm not a dick. I like to, I, I don't even like to talk shit about my opponent. It's, Max has pissed me off this last this this one by talking shit on social media, but I'm not about that. I like I'm just a, I just want to be a nice person, do nice things for nice people, and you know, just. Yeah, just if you graft, you can achieve anything, really. I love that attitude. Um, I'm not going to run through the full card, but the main event is local to you in Edge at Cartwright. So who's your pick, who's your pick out of them two? Jonas, and, uh, Jonas Magard and Jack Cartwright, because that's a tense fight, that, isn't it, that main event? Yeah, it's a deadly fight, mate, because they both bring such good but different attributes to the fight. I think, I think Cartwright is going to have the edge in the boxing. I think 
Jonas has been has probably had a little bit more of a harder test in his previous fights, but I'm I'll stick with my the homeboy Jack. I think he is an absolute animal, but you know that's no disrespect to Jonas because Jonas is a beast in himself. But I do think I think Jack might nick it. But I wish them both the best. I think it's going to be an absolute stunning fight. I think it's a fan friendly fight. Um, I'm just a bit gutted that my main man Abe is not the main event, and you know. Yeah. That, that fucking Elias Garcia has done a runner. Lost, lost his pen, didn't he? <laughs> Honestly, he shit the jocks, didn't he? Oh, what, 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 Thing is, though, as well, if you've got cousins like the Pettis brothers, who were the most game, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. absolute talented, world level fighters, and then you're bringing them up in an interview, and then you're absolute shitting it and running off on a, a cut eyebrow win. My boy Abe should have been uh, the main event that night, but. We don't cry over spilled milk, do we? No, that's it. We move. Um, so, albeit all, all going well for you on, on the 27th, what's the plans for 2024, Cora? Activity and climbing them rankings? Yeah, I reckon I'll have four fights this year. I reckon that, I reckon I'll be very, very busy this year. Um, I just want to. I just want to keep just make my way up. I think after this fight, I should be in the top five. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm ranked nine now. Um, get one more win. I should be round about the five mark. I should think so. So, yeah, I think we'll be close to a title soon. Just got to look what's ahead of me. Get this uh, another German absolute boxed off, and then uh, yeah, go for that gold. But we'll just see what we'll just see what happens. But I think, well, not I think. I am very confident. I'm going to get this win against Max, and I'm going to put on a, another performance in the night. Absolutely. Well, I'll see you there. And uh, it's been great to chat, Cora. You know, took 30 minutes of your time tonight, so we won't, we won't take you too much longer because I'm sure you've got the got to get an early night up tomorrow on the roads, back training. Hundred percent. But I appreciate you having me on as well. I, obviously, I've watched a couple of your previous interviews with Amy and stuff, and I'm glad to be on and have a chat with you both. It's been it's been class. Thank you, Corey, and we'll um, we'll see you again soon, my mate. Perfect. Nice one, lads.